Now I'm going to show you how you can get a nice graded wash. So we're going to start off by wetting the paper and I'm just using my large number 24 flat brush. You do want to make sure that you spread the water out evenly as well because if you have any puddles forming you're not going to get a nice even layer. So I'm just going to dab my brush off a little bit so I don't have loads of water on my brush. I don't want to add loads of water to the paint. I'm going to start off with my turquoise which is this beautiful turquoise colour by Windsor & Newton and this is the designer's squash that I'm using and all I'm going to do, I just I prefer to paint on a bit of a slant like this so all I'm going to do is just start painting my colour onto the paper and can you see how vibrant that is, isn't that beautiful? You can see that it's lightened a bit at the bottom and that's because first of all I had quite a lot of uh, paint in my brush and then as you apply more paint and your paint runs out then it becomes lighter because you've got less pigment in your brush. I'm going to add purple to this now so this is um, violet. I'm just going to make sure that I overlap that onto the turquoise so that those colours mix together and I'm just using my flat brush. Flat brushes are amazing for doing washes because you get a nice sort of even result. Just taking the paint off my brush now, so I just dabbed it on a brush to get most of the water off my brush and all I'm going to do is just use my damp brush to blend that out a little bit. Now my blue, so this is the, I'll find out the colour for you and I'll let you know in a minute. Uh, this blue I'm just going to use it and sweep it back and forth making sure that it mixes with the purple. I'm just going to sweep it down. What I am going to do is just squeeze the water out of my brush as much as I can. So I've got quite a dry brush, it's still a bit damp. But I'm going to take the thick gouache and I'm going to actually add the thicker colour to the very bottom. And that's because I just want a bit of a variation in colour and tone. Not colour, sorry, tone. And the tone is how light or dark the colour is. So can you see how that's created a lovely blend from the turquoise to the purple to the blue and if you did want them to blend out a bit more all you need to do is just rinse your brush off really well take out the excess moisture and just add the paint to your paper and just use that colour to blend back and forth into that paint so if you wanted to build up the colour you could by adding more paint to your brush I'm going to pick up the turquoise again now adding it a bit thicker at the top and then using that to blend over the purple and then when you blend it like this just take your time but you what you do want is not to have a line so you don't want to have a line where you can see those two colours sort of stopping and starting and that's happening here with the purple so what I'm going to do with the blue at the bottom is take the blue make sure there's not much water in your brush again and I'm just going to start at the bottom and just use my brush and blend it upwards into the purple so that we get a nice blend there because I don't want um, I don't want a harsh line. You could always take your brush back and forth and blend it all the way up if you wanted to to make sure it's really blended. And then we have a beautiful seamless little blend. Now with this, well, you can do whatever you want. You could leave it to dry completely. And what I'm going to do is leave it to dry completely and then I'll show you how you can work on top of this with other mediums. Uh, I might actually use some more gouache and show you how you can do a pattern or a design on top of this and um, it makes such a beautiful background. I'm going to paint a feather now and I got this inspiration from unsplash.com so I just found this simple feather, I just typed in feather and it came up with this so I'm going to just use this for some inspiration now and the colour that I'm using is this silver colour so this is a gouache colour and it is my newest colour is silver so it's like a metallic silver colour and actually this is the first time I'm using this so I'm actually really interested in finding out how opaque this colour is so I'm going to start off with the middle part of the feather. So I'm just going to paint in the middle stem part. I'm not going to paint it all the way down. It's The feather's stem is always a bit thicker at the bottom. So I'm just going to paint it a bit thicker at the bottom. And actually this is really lovely and opaque. 
and then I'm going to add a bit of water to this now to make it a bit more um, a bit more what do you call it <laughs> see-through um, uh, because I want the middle part to be less see-through and I'm just going to use my brush really to start painting in the feather and what I'm going to do is leave like a little gap so you'll see me sort of leaving bits of the paper in between and that's just something that I've decided to do just for this feather so you can do whatever design you want you can use pens you can use colored pencils you don't have to paint anything on this at all if you don't want to but I just thought it would be nice to play around and paint something on top of this and I thought um, it did take me a while actually to think what to paint on top of it but I love painting feathers. Feathers is something that I started with when I first started learning how to paint in watercolours. It was the first ever painting that I did and um, I fell in love with it. So feathers have just got a little special place in my heart. So my camera battery ran out as I was trying to paint this feather for you. But I just painted this simple feather using the metallic silver and I think it came out really well. Can you see the shimmer and the shine on that feather? The gouache, because it's gouache, it was really easy to layer over the gouache because gouache can be opaque. It's a nice, thick, opaque medium if you don't add too much water. You could use anything on top of this. Like I said, you could use the Posca pens, markers, acrylics, gouache. You could use fine liners, pencils, coloured pencils. White pencils would look really great on top of a coloured background like this because white is a really high contrast for colours and dark colours. Uh, you could use just normal pencils like this. So this is just a graphite pencil. Yeah, have a go playing around with to your heart's content and let me know in the comments box what materials you've used on top of your designs and also what designs you've used as well because I'm always looking for ideas myself. I'm going to start off by wetting the paper and I'm going to use this large oval wash brush. This is an oval pointed wash brush, it's a size 1 inch by Silver Black Velvet and I love it, it's a beautiful quality brush. And all I'm going to do is just wet my paper, um, simply wetting it evenly all over and I've taped my paper down to my board. So these boards I got from a place called Jackson's Art Supplies and they're an art supply store in the UK and I also got this masking tape from Amazon so I'll leave links to any art supplies in the uh, description box. I'll leave links to any Amazon links as well if um, you're not from the UK and you want to shop um, from other countries then I'll leave an Amazon link as well so you can find those art supplies. All I've done is wet the paper now. I'm going to simply take my wet brush and I'm going to take any gouache and I'm not even going to think about this and this is so fun to do because you don't have to think about it. I tend to gravitate towards my favourite colours and um, this will give you a good indicator of what your favourite colour is. So I'm going to just start dropping the paint onto the wet areas and sort of just using the tip. So I'm holding my brush up, using my loose hands and I'm just going to sort of do little swirls with the tip of my brush. So I'm not making this perfect, I'm just simply using little swirls and you can see if your brush is quite wet you're going to get these sort of blobs on the paper but just leave it, just leave it do its thing and just um, see what happens. I love the surprise that you get with this result. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take some white, so I'll use my blob of white here um, and I'm going to take the white and I'm going to actually just paint over some of the turquoise swirls so that we get like a, light, like a lighter version of that turquoise and I love using white. This is why I love gouache so much because when you use the white it just becomes so opaque and the white just mixes so beautifully with the colours. So you can see I'm not actually going over all these turquoise blobs. And I'm going to rinse my brush off again. And you want to try and think of colours that might go together. So colours that go well together with turquoise would be purple, pink and blues and maybe greens as well and I'm just going to use the same technique so I've got some purple on my brush just using the tip of my brush and I'm just blobbing that on and just using a very loose brush 
and just using the tip of my brush, just allowing it to just do whatever it wants. And I'm just using this sort of spinning motion with my hand. And can you see how fun this is? If I add a bit more water to my brush, I get the paint flowing out a bit more. So I'm going to actually add a bit more water. You get a lighter version of that colour. Rinsing off my brush now. I'm going to add the white again. So picking up the white. And I'm just, again, going to use that white and swirl it over the purple that I've put down. And can you see how that's sort of picking up the colour, taking the colour with it and creating this lighter purple in areas and then leaving the darker purple elsewhere. When you do this with the white and the blue as well, it sort of helps the purple to mix into the blue in areas as well. So you get this variation in colour, which is so pretty. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off and you do want to rinse your brush off really well in between the white and the colours because the white seems to be hardest to get off your brush. I don't know if it's just, it seems really thick compared to the other colours. Uh, now I'm going to use a bit of magenta I think, just a little. This magenta is very uh, in your face, <laughs> it's very pigmented as you can see. So I'm gonna, just going to drop that into a few little areas, just swirling my brush around. Some you can make sort of oval shaped, some you can make more circular, it is completely up to you. These do not have to even join, some of them are not even joining up. And I think I'm going to use a bit of pink now. So this pink that I'm using is opera pink and it's beautiful. It's a very fluorescent pink which I love and it's probably my favourite colour because I always tend to squeeze it onto my palette. I, I'm tending to use it in most of my gouache paintings now. <laughs> so I'm just using this swirling motion with my brush. I'm just basically having so much fun. Don't even think about it. I find this really relaxing. Just watching the colours mixing together. And the vibrancy and the patterns. It's just so pretty. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off again. And I think what I'll do actually is add a bit of blue, maybe a tiny bit of blue, so this blue is lovely and I keep forgetting the name of this blue though, I think it's primary blue and just add in a few swirls here and there and I can actually take the turquoise again which is the colour we started with and add that on top so you get more of a pop of that turquoise on top. So if you lose the colours underneath, you can just take those colours again and add them again. So you can see I'm just using that swirling motion. And when I pop this turquoise on now, it's actually grabbing the other colours underneath and mixing them together, which is so pretty. Now I'm going to rinse my brush off really well. And I'm going to pick up my white with my clean brush. If you're wondering what brush I'm using, this is a number 14 Skoda Prado. This is a synthetic printed round brush and it's one of my newest brushes but I really love it. I use silver black velvet brushes a lot and this is actually one of my favourite brushes now but I do love the silver, silver black velvet brushes a lot. But yeah, this is becoming one of my favourite brushes to use at the moment. I love it. It's, such a lo it's got such a lovely beautiful pointed end and I can get some lovely control with this brush. Now this is the white popping onto the page. And I don't want to mix all the colours together because I do want that pop of colour here and there. Can you see how some is just just so pure? And I'm just going to rinse my brush off now. Well, now what I'm going to do is take my pink. So this is a nice sort of thick mixture of paint but it's got water mixed into it. And I'm just going to sort of tap the end of my brush while the paint is still wet and that's just going to apply some splatters but hopefully those splatters will start bleeding outwards which they are and that's because the paper is still wet I don't want to go wild with this, I am only going to use one colour but how pretty is that? Whoa! I love it! So don't worry if you go wrong with this and you don't end up liking the results you can just do it again because it's so easy to do uh, you, you can use cheap paper with gouache as well, which is great. You don't have to use watercolour paper. This paper that I'm using is my cheaper end watercolour paper. So I've just used the back of a, pe a painting that I didn't like. 
let this dry now before we remove the masking tape and then we'll see the desired result and I just think this makes such a beautiful background. You can pop wording down onto this. The next background we're going to do is a masking tape background. So all you need is some thin masking tape and you could use thicker masking tape if you want but I do find that the thinner masking tape works better. And you can just start laying down your masking tape on your paper in whatever position you want. You could always just rip up bits of paper, of uh, masking paper if you wanted to. So I'm going to show you how you can just rip up the masking paper, or masking tape sorry, into funny shapes like this and then just lay it down. So if you just lay it down in random ways you can actually get some really interesting effects when you take off the masking tape at the end. So I'm literally just going to rip my masking tape. Doesn't matter if it's messy. I'm just laying it down on my paper. And then I'm going to just continue with that. So just rip it fast. So you've got some really organic shapes or so just some really... Um, unnatural sort of shapes, really rugged shapes. And then I'm just going to lay down my masking tape here and there, really. I'm not even paying particular attention to where I put it. I'm just having fun. Just place it down wherever you feel, wherever your hand wants to go. Just pop it down. So I'm going to pop it down here. And this is quite thick masking tape. It's not the thin, thin masking tape. But it's not the really thick masking tape either, it's kind of in the middle. So if you want um, some nice thin lines, I would suggest getting the thinner masking tape. I think I'll pop one maybe across like that as well. And then let's pop one here as well. Can you see how they're not even facing in the same direction? I think I'll actually put one by here as well, just because <laughs> I feel like it. So press your masking tape down nice and flat and then this is the fun part. All we're going to do is just start taking our paint. So this is kind of a mid strength so it's got a bit of water mixed into it but not loads so it's not really runny you know. And what you can do is have a play around with the colours because these colours, um, because these sections are sectioned and they're smaller you can play around and have more time to work on those sections because the paint is not going to start drying in other areas. So I'm actually going to add a bit of yellow to that now while that's drying. So you get a nice colour colour blend with those two colours. Add a little bit of white in the middle there to blend those colours together. I'll add a bit more of the pink here where that colour went a bit wrong. <laughs> and then add yellow. And it just gives you more time to work on that section so you can really have fun with this. Like I said, try not to have too much water in your brush because you don't want the masking tape to start uh, peeling off. So if you have less water in your brush, there's less chance of that masking tape peeling off. I'm going to paint that all over and then what I am going to do is take my purple and drop that in. Just allow those two colours to blend together. You can really have fun with the colours on this because I just find it's kind of like that thing that you used to do in school, and tell me if you did this in school, where you just do a random squiggle on the paper and then you fill in those random squiggles with different colours. This kind of reminds me of that. It's so fun and relaxing to do. This is a really ideal thing to do if you're in front of the telly and you just feel like doing something creative but something quite relaxing as well, you don't want to have to really think about it. This is a really fun one to do. So I've got some blue on my brush now. There is too much water in there, so I'm just going to take some of the water out of my brush. Because I'm rinsing my brush in between, I'm adding lots of water to my brush. So I'm just going to move my brush back and forth with the blue. And then rinsing off my brush, I think I'll take the pink and add that on. Let those two colours mix together in the middle so they're creating a purple. So can you see that's made kind of a purpley violet colour, that's beautiful actually. Rinsing my brush off a bit further, adding a bit more of the pink. So we've got more of a fresh pink now. And then a bit more of the vibrant. Got a bit of the pink mixed with the white now, so it's a bit more pastel. 
a bit more opaque because the white makes the paint really opaque. I'm just going to paint that across, add in a bit more of the white. So there's quite a lot of white in this now. I love adding white to gouache. I think that's my favourite reason why I love using gouache because you can add the white to it and it just makes it so interesting. Um, what other colours can we start using? I think I'm going to use some purple, a bit of maybe a bit of purple by here, and maybe a bit of purple here. But then what I am going to do is rinse my brush off and I'm going to take my, what can I take, my turquoise. Oh, we've already used turquoise, haven't we? And I'm going to add that to the purple and just let those two colours blend together. And can you see how I've took a bit of purple with me so it's making a brand new colour? That's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> I love it when that happens. So I'm going to actually just use the colour that's on my brush because I think it's really pretty. Add in a bit of white now, so I'm using white to blend that colour out. Indigo, so I'll just go with it and take the indigo with me. When you add the colours next to each other, if those colours are still wet, you've got a lovely sort of soft blend. So can you see those colours blending into one another? Continue with that indigo because I really like it. So it's a bit thicker now. I love this little blend here where the water is sort of pushing away the paint. So what I'm going to do is take some clean water and purposely add that. So that water is going to start pushing away the paint and we're going to get some lovely colour blooms. And what you can actually do is take some water droplets and drop them on as well if you want to. And that's going to create some little blooms. Some to here. I'm not an expert on adding blooms to gouache as yet, but I think it has the same sort of result as it, um, the same sort of effect as it does with watercolour. Here's some magenta. I love this magenta colour. It's beautiful. Look at that. The vibrancy on that is so pretty. And then we're going to pop in some, what should we pop in? My favourite colour, of course, turquoise. I'm just going to blob it in. Look at that. See, you can just play around with pattern. It's so lovely. Uh, a bit of turquoise again on the end. And then rinsing off my brush, I'm just going to use my clean damp brush to blend out that colour. So it sort of fades away. So you can practice all your different techniques with this um, because you've got lots of time to work on each section. And that's what I love about adding masking tape. I think that there is a little space that I've missed. Pop that blue in there. Pink is my favourite. Well, apart from the turquoise, it's my favourite as well. So at least this pink and this turquoise colour, both my favourites. So there's just a tiny bit of pink there. And what I did want to do is just add the yellow to that pink, just a tiny bit have a little bit of a colour blend. Now what I'm going to do is leave this to dry completely and when I take the masking tape off you're going to see some wonderful effects and can you see how fast and easy this was to do? Like this is such a great one for kids to do at home so if you've got children maybe if you're a mum or a dad or an auntie or a nan or whatever and you've got kids that you just want to entertain over the holidays or in the evenings this is such a lovely activity to do with them they can easily apply the masking tape themselves and then just have fun with all the colours I, my little girls are six and they love doing activities like this they have so much fun and it just brings out their creativity because they're allowed to just do whatever they want to which is great for, uh, for children I'm going to start removing the masking tape now. So I'm going to start with the white masking tape. And you want to do this slowly so that none of the paper rips. Look at that beautiful line there. How crisp is that? So just be really careful. You can see I've just gone over the masking tape there. But I'll take that masking tape off in a minute so it'll be a bit more crisp. Can you see that when I remove the smaller masking tape, lovely marks this leaves behind. So like I said, just take your time with removing the masking tape because you don't want any of the paper to rip and you also don't want to take any of the paint with you as well. I'm going to remove these little pieces that I popped down in the middle and you just got these really random textured marks with these little masking tapes which I love because you can't really create that just with a paintbrush alone. 
So it just makes it really interesting, a bit more surprising when you lift off the masking tape. And I love the surprises that you can get just from doing this little technique. You make me, make me, make me wanna cry. How's your day been anyway? So today I've been walking my dog. Um, the weather's been lovely today, so I've sent my kids to school this morning. I've got four children. Um, I've got two teenagers. Well, one's an adult now, actually. He's just turned 18. So I've got um, an 18-year-old boy, I've got a 13-year-old boy, and then I've got uh, six-year-old twins. So I love to spend my time when they're in school just working on my dreams and working on my goals because I want to work with my art. I'm building up an online um, art business at the moment, so I've got a website now, so I'll leave that link down below for you to have a look at. Um, yeah, but I'm slowly building it up, and I do teach on Skillshare as well, so if you're interested in any watercolour and gouache tutorials, I teach on there. Look at these beautiful markings now. I'm also going to take this tape off to show you what it looks like when there's a lovely crisp border around the edge because it does make the world of difference. I'm actually going to keep this tape because this tape is painter's tape and it's amazing for staying sticky. So I'm going to take that and I'm actually going to reuse it because let's face it, things like this are not cheap and I am trying to save money. So let's take that off. And look at that beautiful crisp edge. This is one of my favourite parts of painting with masking tape, is actually taking the masking tape off because you've got a really good sense of the finished piece and it just brings that piece together with the really straight and bold edges. Now you could leave that at that if you want to, but what I wanted to show you is how you can take Posca pens, marker pens, uh, white gel pens, any sort of other medium on top of this and add some doodles. So I'm going to be using Posca pens because they're amazing, they're really highly pigmented, they stand out a lot and I've got a selection here. So if I want, if you want me to leave any links in the description box to these, I will uh, because I got them from Jackson's Art, but you can get these in lots of stationery shops, you can get them on Amazon as well and I'll leave some Amazon links as well for you. Um, I've got these white pal uh, paint pens and I don't recommend them to be honest so I'm going to scrap that. Um, <laughs> the best paint pen I've got at the moment is this white Posca pen, they are amazing. Uh, this one is a 0.7mm, a millimetre sorry, and then this one, uh, these bigger ones are a 0.9 to 1.3mm so they have a bigger end, kind of like a small marker pen and this one looks a little bit more like, uh, like a a fine liner pen so it's got a really thin tip. You can do any doodles you want but I'm going to just pop in some simple flowers. So I'm just going to pop in a few little petals, add swirls. I really like to add swirls to things because they're just so easy to do. You can add these sort of scrolly looking things. You can add circles, make them bigger in areas just so that you get a variety, add some small dots around. Can you see how just by adding little doodles to the paper that are so simple it just really makes that piece look so interesting and it's so much fun to do and working with a white pen like this is great because if you've got a dark background, especially this dark background here, the white really stands out against the dark background so I'm just going to pop in a flower again. I think I'm going to do a different flower. So these are the type of doodles that anyone can do because they really are that simple. Let's use this turquoise colour. So this is, uh, what colour is this? Metallic green. Oh, emerald green, sorry. So I think I'll pop this on, what would, what colour would green look good on? Pink, because pink and green go really well together. Uh, I think I'm just going to do some swirls like this. Can you see how simple that is? And then maybe just a few dots. And something so simple just brings that piece together. So have lots of fun, grab your materials and have lots of fun 
drawing on this background, I'm actually going to use um, a fine liner, black flying, flying, flying liner. This is a flying liner. I'm going <laughs> to grab a black fine liner and show you what a black fine liner looks on this background as well. Let's do a little tree shaped thing. So wiggly, wiggly tree shape like that. And then you can sort of join down the middle like that with some little broken lines. So that kind of looks like a little tree or something. This is my finished piece and I wanted to leave some of the shapes plain. This one's got pattern on it anyway so I decided not to do anything on it because I love that pattern there. I decided to leave the rest of it, like these shapes here I think are really interesting looking anyway as they are. And this one has got to be my favourite, I don't know why, I think it might be the punchy pink against the bright orange and yellow, I just think that beautiful, I just think that combination is so pretty. And one of my other favourite parts is this little water bloom that we created and I've popped in a little octopus doodle not that I'm very good at drawing and things like that so I just made that up on the spot so like I said just use your imagination have a look at these shapes on your paper and just decide then and go with the flow what you're going to draw and doodle you don't have to doodle anything at all you could use um, gouache on top of this or any sort of uh, acrylic inks uh, you could use brusho, it is completely up to you what you do on top of your uh, patterns, if anything at all.